Hi guys, in my previous video I mentioned how we used some pre-existing parts to build the ARC-1. And separately, a few people have been asking about the resemblance between the ARC-1 and these Heyday headphones that Target's selling. As we mentioned in our earlier video, we decided to create an over-the-ear Bluetooth headphone. We made a strategic decision to go with a pre-existing housing instead of creating one from scratch. We found a really comfortable, light, well-thought-out headphone design that was readily available to us. And we used that for the outside of the ARC-1. It's a little bit like when Tesla came out with the Roadster years ago, which looked a lot like the Lotus Elise. On the outside, they were almost twins. Under the hood, totally different car. So what seems to have happened is that the team over at Target or Heyday ended up using very similar parts from the same supplier. We don't know their motivation for using this exterior, but for us, it was a way to leapfrog some of the development process, find a battle-tested frame that's sturdy, lightweight, and streamlined, so we could put 100% of our effort into sound quality. Now let's look under the hood. So first of all, you can see the Heyday headphone has a different covering on the grill, and all of these acoustic parts in the ARC-1 are different right off the bat. The ARC-1 uses a completely different design, with an acoustic membrane that gives us more control over the movement of the driver at all frequencies, which of course makes a dramatic difference in sound quality. And if you can see in here, you can see it as a typical Mylar diaphragm driver that most headphones have. Here's another pair of ARC ones that's had the grill removed during acoustic testing, so you can see the driver more clearly. If you look closely, you can see it consists of the cone and surround, two parts. This is what makes it different from the single part diaphragm commonly used in dynamic headphones. The surround is made of a thin elastic polymer. It's very flexible, and it really improves the low frequency response. The middle part is a super thin but stiff and lightweight composite cone which, with reinforced center dome. Compared to Mylar, this dramatically reduces breakup distortion, which gets you smooth and natural mid and high frequencies. However, even the best driver can't make headphones sound great all by itself. The design of the so-called acoustic circuit is important to control the driver across the full range of frequencies and volume levels. It's not a circuit made of wires, it's a word used to describe the entire acoustic system, which consists of various cavities, holes, ports, and these pieces of resistive acoustic cloth. Everything, including the ear pads, are considered to be parts of the acoustic circuit. Its job is to create an environment that allows the driver to perform optimally at all times. For example, these holes in the front plate are a bit like the ports in a box speaker. It's covered with some fabric, and the fabric's density, along with the size and number of holes, have a big effect on performance. The cavities on both sides of the front plate communicate through these ports. This modulates the pressure, which then reaches your ear. The parameters of these ports were chosen to maximize this pressure over specific frequencies in order to maintain a balanced performance. If there's too much resistance, then you lose the responsiveness of the driver. Too little, and you'll have resonance and peaks where you don't want them. The whole system works in concert, pardon the pun. And it's a combination of science and art that goes into tweaking all these variables. Here is the dual radio Qualcomm CSR8670 chipset. We discussed this in the previous video too. That's obviously different than the Heyday model, and although we don't know what chipset Heyday is using, ours has some advantages like APTX support, high quality DSP, and so forth. Not to mention the two radios. So I hope all this makes sense. We're always happy to answer questions, of course, but we wanted to put this video out and make it clear that although some of the parts are in common, the headphones are really very different, and the similarity is only superficial. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't hesitate to reach out with questions or comments.